Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and once again we have Mr. Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. Well, Noah, once again our customers have come through for us. Uh, they've delivered a wound rotor motor case study. An exciting spin from our normal motors. Right, we don't, we rarely get this. Um, we want to take away some of the fear factor in testing wound rotor motors. Yeah, I mean, it's theoretically they're the same as far as induction, but the access to the rotor is significantly increased with wound rotors and it allows a little bit of, uh, I'd say, interesting troubleshooting approach. Well, let's get into it. We have a lot of data to go over, but before, here's some wound rotor motor applications that you might see out in the field. Uh, require high start, starting torque and a range of speed control. True. You see it in uh, cranes, compressors, you've got a nice list there. Uh, you know, trash energy or, or, or trash uh, shredders, this kind of thing that require heavy loading uh, and a lot of torque. Some of the uniqueness in the wound rotor motor is that it has resistor banks and it also has, instead of actual rotor bars, it has form wound coils or windings that make up the the rotor circuit. Very different from your classic uh, squirrel cage, although the principles again are the same. Uh, just a very different uh, construction difference. So we would feel like our data, our current signature analysis, should be able to identify pole pass side vents like you normally would in a normal induction motor. Absolutely. Okay, well let's see this motor specifically what we have. It's an electrostatic precipitator motor. It's used in a kiln operation and, and by the way this data came to us from our good friends in the Philippines uh, at a cement facility. So we're excited to have as much global uh, coverage as we get and so we're real happy to have this data. It's an electrostatic precipitator motor for a kiln. Now without it this kiln does not run and it takes the dust out of the uh, the equation so to speak for process uh, and good good maintenance in the uh, kiln operation. So not just a good size motor but a critical motor to the application. Extraordinarily critical. 4160, 500 horsepower, uh, 880 RPM so it's slow and once again it's wound rotors so right. there's and no bars. And since we're dealing with rotors and that troubleshooting effort we should remember 880 RPM. It'll be a key, a key element through the troubleshooting. Exactly. So we have the data, we took this in October of 2013, and we can see a little bit of activity, can't we? Absolutely, and, and you know, notice the alarm levels that we put on there, although that's a general induction motor alarm level. Uh, you want to tweak the, your approach to those with the wound rotors, but certainly it is elevated. It's elevated, so we want to put it in at least an observe condition. It's definitely for a baseline, right? You got a baseline, you know what's up there, we want to make sure, because it is a wound rotor, slightly different than, a, than a, the pure operation of an induction uh, squirrel cage, so let's put it in, in, in observe and, and watch it. And you can see here we're about 60% loaded, so let's see what our next data point tells us. Well here we have January, three months later, Wow! and what a difference we have in the current signature analysis capture. Yeah, the amplitude of that pull pass is almost reaching uh, surreal levels uh, is a good way of putting that. Uh, rarely do we see amplitudes of pull pass that high. Uh, this deserves an immediate attention and... and it's almost and as high as the carrier frequency. It really itself. is. It's approaching line frequency. So we've said the speed on the prior test was 890 something. Now it's 878. It's below nameplate. One of those indications that we always try to coach our our end users to remember that as speed at common loads or consistent loads starts to go down, uh, this is an indication of rotor anomaly. And we did have common loads. The, the October test was in the 50s, 57 or 58, mm -hmm. and we're in the 60s here. So we know we have consistent data, but the big difference is right here with our speed. Oh yeah, it's a big drop. Now let's look at demodulation, another way to look at this data. Certainly our preferred tool for two-pole motors, but it's very good throughout all the speeds. And, uh, and, and these amplitudes, when we clean out that 60 hertz, a lot of times it gives us a little more clarity on what that pole path is doing through a trend. And we can see here we're a 0.15 on our amplitude in October. But I wonder what happens in January. What a big difference that is, correct? Wow. Oh yeah, no, it, of course, you're, you're, I'm sure you're going to point out the location, 
But if that amplitude is, is, is apples to apples, we're talking 3,000% increases here. Right, and so this was where our normal window we would expect to see our pole pass sideband. It's so it slowed down so significantly, it's not even in that window. Right, so if you think of pole pass as a slip-related element, when, it, when that pole pass increases, the slip is increasing, so the actual value of frequency goes up as far as a larger slip. Mm -hmm. And the technician, what alerted them to this was the, uh, the process, uh, the process personnel were saying, hey, we're having some pretty significant current swings. Can you come out and take a look? Right. Sometimes operators are your best indication, right? They say, hey, there's something weird going on. They may not know the operation of, the, of exactly how this motor works, but when they see that meter, you know, uh, varying back and forth, it's And in this case, indicator. it's varying by about 70 amps. It's unbelievable how much that's changing. And it makes sense now why that pull pass frequency was approaching line frequency. This is almost going from no load to full load, you know, multiple times in a second. Right. So that is pretty significant piece of data. And now, thermography, this is a great backup. What is this showing us? Always a great correlation. And what this does is it, you know, it, it keys right in on, on, the, on the location of the fault. Uh, we're seeing temperatures that are, again, almost unbelievable, ways up into a, a 500 degree level. We're approaching, let's melt things. Uh, and in this level. case, if we leave this unchecked and let it go unfixed, this is going to cause problems. I would think this kind of heat that you're literally, if not, you know, hours, maybe days away from uh, creating almost a single phase. And that, that in a wound rotor is much more uh, a bigger impact than your standard squirrel cage induction. Now let's take a look at the actual picture once we secure power to it. This is showing significant damage. Ah, yeah, the, um, the discoloration is extreme and we're seeing uh, literally indications that the, the metal is starting to deform which means the heat's so high, you're literally starting to melt stuff. I'm surprised that there's even any, any insulation left. You wonder how long this was actually occurring. So we're going to talk about the actual fix at the end of this slide and the cost savings, but here's some post-repair data because it's always good to get a follow-up data point, is it not? Once it's been fixed, let's see if it's been fixed. Yeah, you hate to claim too many savings until after you've proven that what you thought was the problem is gone. And this is what a great follow-up. Well, we went from a 0.15 to now we're down in 0 0.01 land. Right. So even from the baseline pass. that we considered an observed level, uh, we have significantly reduced the pole pass frequency amplitudes. And our post-repair data with thermography shows essentially equal along all three phases. Our post-repair data current, remember we were getting 70 amp swings? Almost completely gone. I mean completely, completely gone. Nice. And this, and this is your baseline now. Uh, the beauty of having this is now you know what is normal uh, and you can go in the future with a lot more confidence in making these calls. So you're exactly right. We would set this as our new baseline and here's our last uh, piece of repair, post-repair data, our current signature analysis that shows that that pole pass is even below any of the markers there. Yeah, we're at the same low. We're seeing the, the, the significant reduction. What a great follow-up. So our cost savings, obviously we're in this to save money for our company, for our maintenance department, for our reliability team. Without this motor, the kiln cannot operate. Had this motor been in this condition for much longer, maybe it shuts down and you burn out the rotor. That's, a, that's an end game. You, to just redo the rotor itself, you're talking 700,000 Filipino pesos, right? So that's a 45 to one ratio mm. for US dollars. So 16,000 US dollars. But what's not even or, or, or put into this equation is the 24 hour loss of production. Yeah, because honestly the, the 16,000 is minor compared to the 24 hours loss. We've seen case studies in uh, surrounding kilns in the past uh, that we've talked about where the amount of loss per hour is, is unbelievable. Yeah, it'd be in the hundreds of thousands oh, yeah. of dollars for the day of loss production and the millions of uh, pesos for the day of loss production. And this ended up just being a bad brush. Unbelievable. See, so we had a pretty high resistance connection at that brush. It took us one hour to replace it. Mm. So some excellent cost savings there. As always, we'd like to thank you for your time and we are uh, appreciative of all the information that you send to us. Keep your case studies coming, and if you want some more information, you can come to our YouTube channel or visit us at www.pdma.com or give us a call at 813-621-6463. As always, stay safe out there, and we look forward to seeing 
any more case studies or hearing from you real soon.